40,000 Reasons, Chapter Number 131 Adriel, written by P.F. For the final part of the Balor Crusade, Forge Maguire sent their Titan Legion and two night houses to help, because the orc world of Balor and their war boss were building a massive army of gargants and stampas, the orc equivalent of a titan. Now, fighting orcs is rather simple if you know what you're doing. First, exterminate their orbital assets. Much easier than dealing with a Tyranid high fleet, as even a thousand orc warships and a hundred rocks, plus five smaller space hulks only serve to increase my inventory of ship hulls and free metal. Of course, if a hundred capital ships like orc battleships, terror ships, and kill cruisers happen to be completely obliterated by a massive barrage of Nova cannons, and then reappear intact inside my tesseract, that must have been a miracle from the Emperor. As for the other ships and the space hulks, they will serve as prizes for the participants in the crusade, each chapter participating being granted the honor of boarding and reclaiming a dozen cruisers for their chapter, while Skatarii and Battle Automata from Koner and Maguire got the share of the dismembered space hulks. The Inquisitors and their retinue joined the Mechanicus tech priests and servitors in the second wave, to make sure nothing corrupted was kept by the cargo cult and instead melted down with plasma and promethium. On the surface, we deployed lines of turrets and sentinels, then guardians, knights, and titans, with a few leviathans to handle more delicate tasks. Our armor formed a flanking force and struck the orc horde from the sides, while the corvettes and bombers provided air support. The infantry regiments were entrenched heavily where the terrain was advantageous, like marshes, swamps, and mountains and created kill zones for artillery and ground attack craft. Once everything was in place, all I had to do was dare the orcs to attack and give me a good fight. Of course, they were genetically constrained to oblige and were butchered in detail, band after band and boss after boss, while their supply lines were bombed or sabotaged by special ops units. In a single month, the world was taken with minimal casualties and we moved the troops onwards cleaning up 50 more planets from orc garrisons in the next year. Then the troops reassembled into another big fleet and proceeded to liberate Boros and restore Night House Boros as the rightful rulers. Sadly, most of their population had been decimated under orc rule, being used as slaves or food by the orcs. I could help a little, using the tech priests to rebuild the capital and import a few million new colonists, as well as station three Astra Militarum regiments here indefinitely. Forge Koner could use an allied night house and provide them new suits, while I worked hard for a month to provide their female pilots with new heirs. Sly Marbo acquired another orc boss head in his collection, which made his catacan concubines even more content at having a real man. Oh well, I was better off, I hoped. Calixa had two more kids, and the blank boy was named Flavius and scheduled for the Lamenters. The Infocyte blonde kept the girl by her side and promised to train her in her arts. It worked out great. Soon enough, everyone began returning to their homes and bases, and so did I, but deviating to Sotha on the way. Lady Calistrati and I parted ways as she had a job to do, but she had a blank daughter beside her to keep her safe. She did promise to visit my house on Illivar at least once a decade if possible, and keep an eye out for more blanks or silent sisters. Instead, Lady Villain continued her trip on my ship, eager to fulfill her mission. I didn't completely trust her, because I wasn't that naive. Inquisitors were three bladed weapons, and one of those blades was aimed inward at all times. I did hope that raising children and having her body rebuilt by an angel would quell her suspicions, in time. A month later we arrived at Sotha to find it under attack again, this time by more Eldar Corsairs and a band of Chaos Traders as an unlikely alliance as it might seem. Even worse, the system was covered by Tyranid Silence, a clear sign of another high fleet being drawn by the Pharos Beacon. On the bright side, there were two more Inquisitor ladies on the Ejida Fortress, named Adriel Quist and Azugrail. My companion smiled thinly at me and covered her eyes with her cowl. Perhaps the Emperor is watching over you, Lord Lancefire. I'll tend to the fortress while you romance my colleagues. Valaine whispered after my battle barge serenity was cleared to dock. I just sighed inward and focused on winning the battle first. The carriers were already deploying our corvettes and starfighters, while Vox transmission from the attackers were swiftly replied with plasma warheads riding back the guiding signal right onto their bridge. Unlawfully taken from Royal Road, this story should be reported if seen on Amazon. There were almost 5,000 enemy ships present, 
most of them Sky Raiders and Void Dragons, insane Eldari that had abandoned their craft worlds for a life of fun and raiding. Mostly raiding on the Imperium, naturally. I didn't ask who those Chaos guys were, possibly Tsench worshippers going by the bird heads and wings of their warships. The traders and their thirty Chaos cruisers melted just fine inside the sun. Nothing important was lost, most likely. The Death Watch and the Scythes of the Emperor also had two battle barges and a dozen cruisers stationed here, busy defending the fort lines, by shooting torpedoes and Nova shells on intercept trajectories, forcing the fragile Eldar to engage only in hit-and-run attacks. My own barrage of Nova cannon and torpedoes forced them to clump up, just enough that a hundred Nova mines lit up the void in a blinding conflagration, leaving thirty Corsair battleships listing, their solar sails burned to crisp, and most of the lighter void ships vanished. In a minute, I had my Tech Marines, Silent Sisters, and Blood Angels teleported on the lead ship, with my own fleet surrounding the Eldar derelicts, ready to annihilate them. Hey guys, you may want to board the other battleships and take prisoners. We have captured their leader, an Eldar named Serenia. I demanded towards my nominal allies, who seemed reluctant to leave the safety of the fort belt. Pretty sure they were not expecting my arrival and the rather brutal victory over the Eldar, even if my chapter had almost parity of the numbers with the Eldar void ships, with 32 capital vessels and 2,000 corvettes from the Lancefire dynasty, plus 4,000 Fury starfighters. Used to be 5,000 starfighters, but a crusade is rather costly and losses are inevitable. I did recover the fighter pilots though, so it wasn't all bad. Right, we will begin boarding immediately. Thanks again for your help. Be advised. There are two Inquisitors here that are anxious to meet you. Chapter Master Lancefire. A Death Watch watch captain answered after a minute of tense silence. Probably being given orders right at that moment. One at the time, Captain. Send the youngest one first. I quipped and closed the pick transmission. Then I looked around the bridge to find my officers snickering to themselves, even my own children. This is serious, guys. Inquisitors are dangerous, especially in packs. I told them in fake worry. Rafin flipped a silver throne and held it up to show me the Emperor's skull grinning at me. The Emperor smiles on you, Captain. Ludvius can watch over you, while I take a stroll on those Zeno's warships to look for anything shiny. I nodded and had him appear on another Eldar battleship, besides Sister Tanawalea. Two of them together should be enough to subdue a battleship, but I added a dozen tech priests and a thousand combat servitors, just in case. Canis was the first to greet Lady Adriel at the docking tube, smelling her with suspicion before turning to nod at me. A space wolf! and a rather large one. The Inquisitor remarked after petting Canis fearlessly. That was a good start. Well met, Inquisitor. Any reason why you wanted to meet me? I wondered while checking her out. Another brunette, wide hips, inferno pistol on that. That tan asked for you by name when the Eldar appeared. He seemed rather convinced only you could save him. The woman said in a rather annoyed voice. I raised an eyebrow. That did seem rather strange, but then who knew what a tan might say or do? Then I shrugged as there was nothing I could do. And here I am, saving the day. Perhaps the Zenos is precognitive. Adriel moved closer and poked my nose gently. I may not be a psyker, but I'm quite certain blanks cannot be predicted. And as proof, you massacred the Eldar Corsairs without giving them any chance to flee. I nodded and captured her hand in mine. The Tan are not psychers, my dear. They just see very far and can compute trajectories and arrival dates to the second. Like a ship's machine spirit could, if it had sensor range over a thousand light years. The brunette inquisitor glanced at her hand in surprise before staring me in the eyes. And you're not a real untouchable. I have met a silent sister once and could barely stand her presence from meters away. I politely kissed her hand then placed it on my elbow. I am not a real Astartes either. Only natural organs, and they all work fine. Woof! Canis confirmed with a joyful tone. All natural, you say? Perhaps you can tell me all about it at dinner. I am rather starved. The woman asked and walked beside me like a princess. Oh well, I did buy lots of expensive food and drinks, in case my rose was here. 
but as she was not, I'll make do with another inquisitor.